Hi guys, um, this is Tala Kimani, clinical nutritionist. So today, um, in this recording, I'm going to continue with our series on nutrition and the immune system and how the two are connected. So in the previous two videos, we discussed um, the basics of nutrition and immunity and we it was clear that nutrition is very key for immune function. And um, we discussed key micronutrients that are essential in immune function. And just to do a brief recap, we had zinc, selenium, iron, and copper as the key minerals that are very crucial in immune function. And then for the vitamins, we had vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin B6, and folic acid. All right. So in this recording, I'm going to be discussing more about iron. Um, iron, I know, is um, totally familiar to most of us because it's very important for uh, the formation of blood cells, uh, particularly red blood cells. But it, I'm not sure it's very clear how um, iron plays a role in immune modulation or in... in um, supporting the immune system's function. So iron deficiency definitely does affect the body's capacity to have an adequate immune response. And an, an adequate immune response is very important, especially when we're dealing with um, uh, conditions like COVID-19. Uh, it's important to make sure that the body actually does have a fighting chance uh, whenever it gets infected. Because as I said in the previous recording, there are a lot of people who get exposed to a, a particular microbe or disease-causing pathogen. But whatever it is, whether bacteria, virus, um, or whatever pathogen it is, does not really cause disease in that particular body because the immune system is able to deal or get that uh, particular microorganism out of the system before it could actually cause any kind of infection. So immunity, um, I mean, iron is very important for that kind of uh, function. And the role of immunity, of iron in immunity is necessary for immune cells proliferation and maturation, um, especially the lymphocytes, okay? So what th those proliferation and maturation means is that, um, if you remember, microbiology you know the whole process of cell cell division cell growth um what this means is that iron is very important for for the um immune cells especially the lymphocytes to um properly mature and actually be able to conduct whatever function they're supposed to conduct in terms of immune function um however I mean, iron is a very tricky one because when there's iron deficiency, the body is not able to adequately um, deal with disease or an infection. But also the reverse is true. And that's why iron is a very interesting mineral when it comes to immune function because it has been um, seen through various researches, uh, research studies, that when there's too much iron in the system, um, and there's an infection, the infection and inflammation actually becomes worse. Yeah, it's like the iron actually um, plays a role in, 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 in um, aggravating the infection or, or um, you know, increasing what is called microbial virulence, which means basically in simple terms that it could make um, a certain microorganism or a pathogen be able to infect the body even more. Yeah. So for persons who do not have any kind of infection, especially in this context, we are mostly discussing COVID-19. For a person who does not have an infection already, um, then it's important for them to make sure that the, the, the iron levels are... Uh, um, it's, you know, within the, the limit, the, the, the normal range. 
but for persons who already have infection then the medics really need to and especially if they have very low hb um, the medics really needs to do a proper assessment to really ascertain whether that kind of that particular individual because nutrition is individualized um, the medics and, and nutrition team needs to um, work together in figuring out whether that person actually does require supplementation with iron because um, as we said it could actually increase microbial virulence which will just really um and also inflammation which would beat the purpose of even trying to supplement it in the first place and also make the person actually get worse instead of getting better but for persons who are not infected and uh, infected as i said um iron is very crucial in supporting immune function so we have um, two types of sources when it comes to iron we have animal sources and we have plant sources all right now the body absorbs two to three times more iron from animal sources than from plant sources so um, what that means is that if, if, if you're eating um, and I'll shortly give examples of, of sources of these micronutrients. But if you're eating or if you're um, getting your iron from animal sources, then it, it's more bioavailable or it's the body's able to absorb it and actually assimilate it and use it, use it in the system a lot better than it does with plant-based iron. All right. Um, so for persons who are vegetarians, then it becomes a bit tricky. Um, so in that case, then it's important to make sure that you're consistently taking um, more than one or two sources of um, iron just to try and enhance um, your intake and also to make sure that you're not taking iron uh, with foods that have are high in calcium like milk or dairy products or any other food that's a high source of calcium because that would further decrease the bioavailability of the iron that you're taking from food all right so when it comes to animal sources of iron some of the best sources is lean beef lean means that the fat has been trimmed off uh, remember animal fat is saturated fat so for persons who have um, high cholesterol hyperlipidemia you do want to be taking lean meat all right so lean beef is a good source of iron and then we have um, beef or chicken liver uh, we have chicken um, turkey and for those who like seafood, oysters are very good sources of uh, oysters are a good source of iron. Um, but although the body absorbs less iron fr from plants, it does not mean that um, it, it does not get absorbed. It still does get absorbed. But there are certain things that you can do to make sure that you're maximizing um, the bare availability or you're enhancing the bare availability of the iron you take from food and one of those things is taking um, a good source of vitamin c with your iron rich meal all right so you can take um, a glass of orange juice or any kind of citrus juice they're really good in in it's in, it's a very high source of vitamin c you can also take um tamarind juice for those who like uh smoothies you uh, you can actually take baobab powder um you know there are people who just blend baobab powder with maybe a few other things just make sure there's no calcium source in your smoothie because then that would um, beat the purpose of trying to um, have the vitamin c enhance your iron absorption so for plant-based sources of iron we have beans and lentils um, they is tofu for those who like um, especially a lot of vegetarians and vegans i know do take a lot of tofu that's a very good source of iron that vegans and vegetarians can maximize on and then we have um, baked potatoes cashew nuts or cashews and then we have dark green leafy vegetables such as spinach um, again for spinach i need to remind us that 
Um, I know a lot of people do tend to mix spinach with other green vegetables. And I mean, we already discussed in a previous recording that spinach have oxalates. And oxalates do reduce the bioavailability of um, iron in, in, in the rest of the vegetables that you're going to mix in spinach. So I would highly recommend that you do not mix spinach with any other vegetables. And if you must, then you can mix them with cabbage. But um, I mean, and that's because Kenyans really do like this, you know, mix, mix things. But ideally do not mix it. All right. So spinach are a good source of iron as well. And generally any dark green leafy vegetable. So that could be your terere or amaranth, um, pumpkin leaves, um, you know, and they are the local vegetables as well, the indigenous ones. Um, whole grains are also a very good source of iron. Pumpkin, um, sesame and squash seeds. Um so the next time you cook your pumpkin or your squash, just remove the, 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 the seeds from it, um, clean them, and then roast them the same way you roast your peanuts. They're actually very nice, and they can also be taken as a snack. Um, sesame in Kenya, I know, is mostly referred to as simsim, um, and that is an, a very easy one to find even on the streets. And then we have broccoli, another very good source of iron. Different kinds of nuts, so that could be peanuts, pecans, walnuts, pistachios, um, roasted almonds, or cashews. All right, um, then we have peaches, all right, peach the fruit, peaches, and then we have prunes, raisins, apricots, and split peas. Okay, now. I however need to give caution um, about iron because a lot of us do take food and then immediately after we'll take a cup of tea or coffee. Yeah. Now, drinking tea or coffee um, after co consuming um, an iron rich meal would actually potentially reduce the availability of the iron. All right. So it's 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 important to also understand when you're taking a food, what else would actually reduce the bioavailability or in, enhance the bioavailability or absorption level of the the nutrients you're taking. And as I keep saying, nutrition is very simple but in a very complex way. So. If you do not understand the basics, then you, you end up taking the, the, the sources of a particular nutrient, but will still end up malnourished or, or, or defici deficient, I should say, of um, certain nutrients because of what you call negative nutrient-nutrient um, interactions, right? Um, so as I end this, I, I want to explain the fact that we have, when it comes to nutrients interactions, we have nutrients that are antagonistic and we have nutrients that are protagonistic, all right? So antagonists and protagonists. And just as the word said, um, when you're talking about antagonists, these are nutrients that when you take them together, they'll have a negative nutrient-nutrient interaction. And one or both will reduce the bioavailability of the other, right? And I give an example of iron and calcium. When you take um, a meal that's high in iron and you take a, a rich or a high source of calcium afterwards, like we normally take um, ugali and greens and then afterwards we take maybe a, a cup of mala or milk. So see, milk is a very good source of calcium and the greens are a very good source of iron. So what will happen is the two are going to have a negative interaction and the bioavailability of both micronutrients is going to be reduced. Okay, that's what we 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 refer to as antagonistic micronutrients. Now we have um, on antagonistic nutrients. 
we have nutrients that are protagonistic or protagonists. So what that means is that when you take them together, then they have a positive nutrient-nutrient interaction such that one enhances the uh, bioavailability or the absorption level of the other, right? And um, an example of that is iron and vitamin C. When you take um, a high source of vitamin C after taking a meal that is high in iron, uh, for instance, you can take a glass of orange juice or tamarind juice or baobab um, drink or, or, or uh, what is it? I, I, any source of any high source of um, vitamin C. When you take that after taking a, a meal that is high in iron, then the um, the iron sorry the vitamin C is going to enhance the absorption level of the iron. All right. So um, I hope that we have understood the fact that iron is very important in immune function. But then it's 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 a borderline kind of um, nutrient where when it's too little then it, or when it's deficient then immune function is compromised but when it's in excess and a lot of times we do tend to for instance for somebody who has an infection it could be h pylori it could be um an infestation of of some sort of bacteria or worms in the system that does tend to cause anemia, right? Because, um, you know, like presence of pathogens or, or microbes in the system um, does lead to um, the, the, them now, to the body and whatever pathogen has invaded the, the system to kind of competing um, with each other or, or, you know, for the iron, in the system and that's how you 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 know that that's why you see that people who have infection normally end up having anemia as well but on the flip side when there's already an infection and you give very high doses of iron research has shown that the infection actually does get worse and in fact, in, in inflammation as well. If if you give a person who has um, an infection or has a, a, a an inflammatory response, um, very high amounts of um, iron, then research has shown that it actually does get worse. So to conclude this this recording, what I would say is that. Um, for persons who are not infected or do not have any kind of infection, it's important for us to make sure that our iron levels are uh, at the at, at normal levels or the levels they're supposed to be. And that's by eating the foods that I mentioned or incorporating them in your diet that I mentioned earlier. Now, for persons who already have some, some sort of infection or inflammatory um, condition, then the medical team needs to assess the situation. And, and as I said, guys, I keep repeating this, but it's very crucial. Nutrition is very individualized. We do not have like one size fits all kind of management in, in terms of nutrition and um, disease management as well. Um, it has to be individualized care. So the clinical nutrition team needs to assess the situation and you know, make the decision based on what is in front of them and what is the be and whatever scenario is the best for the patient as well. So um, I'm going to end this recording there. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask on all our platforms. You can check out Stella Afia on YouTube. That is S-T-E-L-L-A-R. Stella for excellent. Uh, Afia for health. So Stella Afia on YouTube. Um, and we now have a website, www.stellaafia.com. And under the clinical nutrition tab, you'll be able to find um, free meal plans that you can use as a guide. Guys, again, remember, you have to have your care individualized. So everything you find on my website, again, is 
is just a guide for you, uh, especially for people who, for one reason or the other, may not be able to access a nutritionist. Um, you can be able to use what's on my website as a guide, but please have see a nutritionist so that you can have that individualized and make sure you actually see a nutritionist, a, like a clinical nutritionist, if if you're talking about disease and stuff like that because we do have a lot of people out there um, purporting to be nutritionists and especially in Kenya and they really are not um so um please um also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be able to be getting our our content and on Facebook we are nutrition specialist hyphen Stella Afia or you can just Google Stella Afia, it will still show up. But remember to put the R, all right? Stella for excellent, S-T-E-L-L-A-R, all right? So until the next recording, stay safe, stay healthy, stay nourished, and um, love and light to all of you guys, all right? Bye for now.